Hello, my name is Ann Mosley. I'm the acting director at the UIS Center for Lincoln Studies. But today, I'm here to talk to you as an ALA board member. Um, I've been a board member for a few years now, and I have loved every minute of it. Uh, I've been able to help with preserving the legacy of Abraham Lincoln, and also to share uh, the wonderful stories that you hear about him through different authors who have done research on uh, the life and legacy of our 16th president. Today, I wanted to provide you an opportunity to ask questions, uh, to learn more about the organization, but also how to become a member. And it's very easy to become one. You can give us a call. You can go to our website, uh, which is abrahamlincolnassociation.org. And we have a variety of members who come from all different walks of life, different states, uh, different backgrounds, but they share something that is quite common, and that is a love for Abraham Lincoln. Now, today you have seen two speakers uh, in our second session. We had Ed Akron, who uh, wrote Every Drop of Blood, and then we have uh, Dr. David Reynolds that you saw this morning as well, discussing his book, Abe. Yesterday, you saw two other speakers, Elizabeth Mitchell, and you also saw uh, Dr. H.W. Brands. And while we have been in this midst of COVID and trying to bring uh, great programming that you would normally see live, uh, usually at the Representative Hall at the Old State Capitol, a place where Lincoln walked and worked and uh, expressed his ideas and grew as a person. And sadly, we've had to bring this live to you. But we hope that the life of Abraham Lincoln is able to resonate to you in your home and you've been able to sit, relax, and enjoy the great programming that we were able to put together for you. So I am going to walk you through a little bit about some of our presenters and also encourage you to go to your local bookseller uh, to purchase some of their books. Personally, I have read many of them and they write very well and they present the life of Lincoln in a very scholarly way, but in a way for you to better understand um, the life of Lincoln through different viewpoints, different aspects of his life. Lincoln lived around 56 years, and there's a lot that was jam-packed into those years. So the first author that we had was Elizabeth Mitchell. Now you'll get a chance to meet all of our uh, presenters this afternoon at the round table, and uh, each speaker provides a unique background to the Lincoln story based on the research that they have done. Now Elizabeth Mitchell, uh, she actually came into the Lincoln Field by doing some research of her own. And her most recent book is Lincoln's Lie, a true Civil War caper through fake news, Wall Street and the White House. I'm actually very intrigued for this book. I haven't read this one in particular. I did read her other book, Liberty's Torch, The Great Adventure to Build the Statue of Liberty. And it's amazing how she was able to tell the Lincoln story um, in her program yesterday. Because in her Liberty's Torch book, she brings the immigrant story to life um, and the interest that people all over the world have in democracy and the formation of the United States. In her Lincoln book, she pulls together uh, an economic look at Lincoln as well as a look at Lincoln in the political discussion, how he was able to dive in, how people viewed him, and how he utilized uh, people with interest, intrigue, as well as finance, uh, and how the Republican Party played into that as well. So it's interesting to see Lincoln as a political animal uh, within her book, and it has definitely encouraged me to go and actually look her book up and get it. Um, our second author that we had was H.W. Brands. Now, uh, The Zealot and the Emancipator 
I've actually read. I have it on audiobook too. Uh, I encourage you to reach out to audiobook as well. Reading along with the audiobook, I strongly encourage because it allows you to gain a better understanding of the writing as well. Brands is a great writer, but to have someone read it to you as well, it kind of keeps you in the mindset and also following along very well with both individuals that he is speaking about, um, John Brown as well as Abraham Lincoln. Now, as you go through the book, you learn a lot about John Brown that uh, you normally don't hear about in school or even uh, through some of the John Brown biographies that have been released. A lot of times there's a hyper focus on Harper's Ferry, which is interesting, but Brands is able to bring to life um, the earlier part of John Brown's life. And I think that's very important to better understand him as a person and his mindset. Um, and Brands does that very well in the very beginning of his book. And he's able to write in a narrative that allows you to go on a journey with him as the author. And he's able to bring to life Brown, but also look at Lincoln and his response to John Brown. Uh, as he stated in his talk yesterday, you have two key individuals, two individuals who have made their mark on history. Brown, uh, Brown had his one way of doing it, which was enacting action, physical action, um, a lot of it turning into violence, whereas Lincoln kind of morphed uh, into a person who was able to use the system to achieve the ends that he saw. And so in Brand's book, he was able to bring to life two individuals that have a complex history and have made a mark in their own way. And each um, person is remembered a lot differently, differently too. Uh, sometimes Brown is not looked at very kindly uh, because of his actions. Uh, Lincoln tends to be put on a pedestal for the most part, but recently Lincoln has been kind of being taken off the pedestal a little bit, and Brands explains that within this book. Now, some of you have probably have seen Brands on the History Channel, uh, where he's been a guest uh, quite a bit, um, and he has done a number of work on presidents throughout history. And he holds the Jack S. Blayton Senior Chair at the University of Texas and has an extensive uh, background in historical research. And it seems like every year uh, you either see him on a new documentary or, on an, um, or releasing a new book. So I'm looking forward to see uh, what he has for the future. And personally, I think, he, I hope he dives into the abolition field a bit more uh, because he did such a great job uh, explaining John Brown in this particular book. Last night, we saw our uh, keynote speaker. Traditionally, we have a banquet every year. And at the banquet, uh, we usually have the color guard, uh, we have a special recording of the evening's events. We have amazing food that was brought to us um, at our table. We all get to dress up, we get to see each other, um, and you get that interaction um, between Lincoln scholars throughout the United States. Some come from international uh, places. And what's so cool, and I think this is a lot of fun, you get a chance to actually speak with students who've been involved in different projects that the ALA has sponsored um, over the years. And these students come to the banquet as invited guests and they get the experience of meeting Lincoln scholars, meeting our, our local dignitaries. Um, they also get a chance to be immersed in this world of Lincoln that a lot of us spend every day in. Um, and it gives them this idea of uh, what they can do in the future. And uh, it gives them a boost, uh, which we all really need in the midst of winter, especially if you're from the Midwest or uh, from the Northern states where it gets kind of cold and we kind of uh, huddle up. Um, but this allows us to interact and form the friendships uh, 
and be in person. And if you have never been to one of our banquets, I strongly encourage you to do so. And it's here in Springfield, Illinois, uh, where Lincoln lived a quarter century of his life. And it's an experience you will not get anywhere else. Uh, so that's typically what we would have. But last night we ended up having a live broadcast of uh, Rich Lowry talking about uh, Lowry talking about his book, uh, Nationalism. I have his other book here because I've read this one. Uh, I have not read the national one yet, but his talk last night has convinced me to really dive into it because there are a lot of layers to nationalism. And to break it down like he did last night um, allows you to gain a better understanding of the difference between nativism, nationalism, and tribalism. Um, and there are so many ways that we can interpret that. Now, Lincoln Unbound, uh, this book in particular breaks down uh, Lincoln's mindset on his views of democracy and um, how Lincoln was able to accomplish something in a very complex time. Um, and the way that he presents it, it allows you to um, kind of gain a better understanding of Lincoln's political mindset and how he was able to use the system to, to his advantage. Um, now, coming from a media background, uh, he served as a editor for the National Review, a columnist for the Politico, Politico um, and he's a commentator for NBC's uh, Meet the Press and ABC's This Week and Fox News Sunday. So he has a lot of reporting background. And if you've never seen him do a report um, on TV, uh, you can definitely tell that he has a reporter background when you read his books. Um, and so it shows how precise he can be and how inform informative he can be at the same time. Um, so you have, if you have not read this book in particular, I encourage you to, to reach out to your local bookseller and get a sense of uh, his writing style as well by looking at some of the articles he's written um, because he definitely brings a perspective um, that is very unique in the Lincoln field. Now, our presenter that we had this morning, Ed, um, he didn't get his proper introduction this morning, which he should have received. Um, but I encourage you to go to his website. It's very user friendly and his book is phenomenal. It is so well written. Um, and Every Drop of Blood has had uh, very good reviews. And in the midst of it, he, he goes into the sacrifice that was made. He gives great descriptions on people's viewpoints um, in regards to the war itself, but also within the uh, context of the inauguration and what people understood, but also what Lincoln needed to, uh, to convey even more. Now, um, Ed has, uh, spent a lot of time writing, researching. Um, he spent a lot of time on baseball history. Um, so it's very interesting. He came out with a Lincoln book, but uh, he ended up winning a uh, Yankee Quill Award for his two acclaimed books about 19th century baseball and American culture, uh, 59 in 84, and the summer of beer and whiskey. and he provides a lot of insight in his books, uh, and you can definitely tell he gets really excited about his topics. Now, the, the next author I'm going to showcase, you actually saw this morning as well, and I really loved his closing today. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I really liked how he closed it and how we should view Lincoln from a 19th century perspective instead of a 20th and 21st century perspective. Um, I find myself telling students that all the time, that you have to put Lincoln in a context um, of his time period. And he also covers uh, a branch of history that I'm very passionate about, which is cultural history. And what he ends up speaking about is his book, Abe. 
which we were so excited to hear that he was the uh, 2021 Lincoln Prize winner with the Gilder, Gilder Lehrman Institute. It's a very good book. It's another one that I would recommend that you also get the audio book to. It's very long. It's not as big as Dr. Berlin Game's Green Monster. Um, as, well, I call it the Green Monster because it's two volumes. But I recommend that you read that one as well because of the footnotes and endnotes. Uh, the, that book is like an encyclopedia. Abe breaks down the cultural context of uh, Lingen's time period. Now, I could talk a lot about this book because I've read it twice um, with the audio. And he does a lot of what, um, oh, um, the, the, there was a book that was written called The Age of Lincoln. That one I, I wasn't as excited about, um, but the one before it, um, it was about Abraham Lincoln. It was written in the 90s by um, Wilkes, and he did a great job with it. And so when I was going in to read Abe, it was exciting to have someone bring the Illinois Lincoln back into light. And so this book in particular, um, I encourage you to, to read uh, because he highlights the Illinois years and the Indiana years and a little bit of Kentucky and brings a bit more of a context uh, to the Lincoln story. So anytime an author, specifically a Lincoln author, highlights the early uh, part of Lincoln's life, I usually grab a hold of the book because that's my favorite part to talk about in regards to the Lincoln story. So my last part it, that I want to talk to you about today uh, before we lead into our uh, roundtable discussion at one, which Dr. Burlingame, our president of the ALA, will be covering um, and asking questions to our authors. Uh, I wanted to mention that on our website, so it is um, abrahamlincolnassociation.org, you can go to the support page, um, and there's a list of how to become a member. And you can actually become a member online. There are uh, different links that you can click on, uh, depending on the membership that you get. Um, the Rail Splitter, uh, uh, sorry, membership page is $50. Postmaster is $100. And, and when you become a member, you actually get an opportunity to um, read uh, our what we call the Journal of the Abraham Lincoln Association. They're scholarly journal articles uh, written by uh, Lincoln scholars from across the board. And you can uh, learn more about Lincoln, about new books coming up. Uh, if there's a Lincoln scholar that's going to be speaking or a special event, you will hear about it first um, in a lot of our uh, Journal of the Abraham Lincoln Association, but you will also hear about it by the newsletter that you will receive uh, called For the People. Now, that comes out um, quarterly, and you will get up-to-date news uh, about what's happening in the Lincoln field, but you will also hear about what the association is doing. When you become a member, you also support not just the functions of the ALA, but you also support organizations that further the knowledge of young people learning about Abraham Lincoln. For example, um, we were able to help fund the Middletown flag uh, being restored in Lincoln, Illinois. Or even the if you donate to our uh, endowment, you support scholarship prizes for individuals who are writing dissertations about Abraham Lincoln. You also can give to uh, endowments and scholarships that will enable the next generation of individuals to become Lincoln scholars. And that is very important. Uh, in order to continue the legacy of Lincoln, in order to reach out to young people, to encourage them to take on the character of Abraham Lincoln, uh, memberships, donations, all of that goes in to supporting the legacy. The Abraham Lincoln Association is the one of the oldest 
Lincoln organizations in the nation. And we have been doing this since 1809. And to support this legacy of Abraham Lincoln and sharing that knowledge with young people, K through 12 teachers, as well as collegiate teachers and professors, um, and the rest of the public, uh, your funds that you donate to us enable us to spread the word about Lincoln and provide those scholarship opportunities for individuals to learn more. So if you have any questions for me, I can take some of those right now. Uh, feel free to put them in the chat. I'd be more than happy to answer questions that you may have regarding the uh, Abraham Lincoln Association and also how to get to some of the links uh, for the sessions that we have recorded. Um, I've, I've been the one behind the scenes uh, running the live streams. And so if you have any questions about how to get a hold of any of the main links on YouTube, Twitter, or on Facebook, um, I'd be more than happy to help you out there. Uh, one of our questions comes from uh, David Wiggers. Does Reynolds do his own narration of Abe? Now, uh, Reynolds does not do the narration for Abe. We have uh, a different speaker for that. Uh, so if you use Audible or if you uh, buy the MP3 somewhere else, um, you will get a different narrator for it. Um, I can't give you the name of the person, uh, but he's very good. Um, he articulates very well with his words. He doesn't speak too quickly. He's also uh, not in, he doesn't speak in a monotone voice like some audible books uh, you can purchase. Um, so when you do listen to it, uh, the speaker does present very well. Uh, so I do recommend it. Great. Well, if you don't have any questions for me, uh, feel free to message us on our Facebook page. Uh, we'd be more than happy to reach out to you to learn more about memberships, our endowment, donations. Also, just a reminder, because I know for me, I, I need a reminder. I have to put it in my calendar. If you are an existing member and you need to renew, feel free to contact the ALA organization. So, uh, Kay Smith will probably be picking up the phone uh, when you give her a call. And we can definitely walk you through on how to renew your membership. Um, all of our members are very important to us. You don't have to be from Illinois to be an ALA member. Lincoln is branched out from Illinois to all of the states within the United States. But he's also internationally known loved and admired. So if you are from uh, the United States, from Illinois, from Massachusetts, Hawaii, um, wherever you are from, feel free to contact the Abraham Lincoln Association where you will find like-minded individuals who admire Lincoln um, and also want to preserve the legacy. Now, if you have any questions about the speakers or our next roundtable discussion, uh, I encourage you to come back at one o'clock. Uh, you will be able to see the stream uh, when you go to the ALA page on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Twitter. And you will be able to ask questions of our speakers, but you will also get a chance to listen to them, talk a little bit more about the books that they have published and learn more about their research style as well. So I encourage you to ask them as many questions as you can uh, because that will be the time to do it. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us on our live streams. Thank you for joining me during this pop-up video um, regarding the ALA membership and some of our speakers. I encourage you to come back. Stay tuned for more fun ways to celebrate the life and legacy of Abraham Lincoln. So I hope to see you at 1 p.m. today, Central Time. And I hope that you'll have your questions ready uh, for our speakers because they're definitely ready to hear from you. So see you at one o'clock today.